Find Winning at Life basically everywhere. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Periscope, Twitch, Daily Motion, DLive, Smashcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Castbox, Castro, Podomatic, Overcast. Did I say Spotify? I think I said Spotify. Anyway, we're everywhere. We prefer you listen on the Winning at Life app, and you can use that app to find us on your preferred platform. Stand by, the show's starting soon. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks starts in four minutes. If you're interested in learning more about money in the financial world, have you checked out the Ask Gregory podcast? The Ask Gregory podcast has financial topics covering everything from how to handle your 401k to social security rules to student loans to precious metals all the best segments that we've done on Winning at Life, and we condense down into specific topics by episode. So if you want to know more about money and investing and retirement, that's a great place to start. Find the Ask Gregory podcast on the Winning at Life app, iHeartRadio, Spotify, podcast app on your phone, and about a thousand other places. I mean, don't go do it right now because the show's about to start, so just sit tight. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks starts in three minutes. Hey, I'm your co-host, James Parker. You can find contact info to some of our show partners, including the Total Wealth Authority on the Winning at Life app. If you're looking for a financial advisor, start your search with Gregory Ricks and Associates. If you have a mortgage issue, Try Dwayne Stein at Mortgage Gumbo. If you have tax issues, try Jude Heath, CPA. And if you have some estate planning questions, try Wes Blanchard. These are all members of the Total Wealth Authority. You hear them on the show on a regular basis, and they're all linked on the Winning at Life app. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks is starting in two minutes. You can listen to previous shows on demand with the Winning at Life app, the iHeartRadio app, Spotify, whatever. It's just the Winning at Life podcast. Now, that's different than the Ask Gregory podcast. The Ask Gregory podcast is episodes sorted by topic. If you just want to hear recent shows on demand, like yesterday's show or the show from Saturday, that's the Winning at Life podcast. That's available everywhere as well. The Winning at Life app, iHeartRadio app, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole drill. Hey, why aren't you already following Winning at Life on all of our social media platforms? You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Periscope, Twitch, Daily Motion, DLive. All these places are linked directly on the Winning at Life app. So download the Winning at Life app, whatever platform you prefer. Find us there. We'll come to you. Stand by. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks is going to start in just a moment. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks starts in one minute. Have you downloaded the Winning at Life app? You can listen to the show live. You can also watch the video version of the show live or you can listen or watch to recent shows of Winning at Life on demand. There's no cost to you. It's in your app store, the Winning at Life app. Welcome to Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. I'm your co-host, James Parker. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Stand by. The show is about to begin.
Hey, y'all. You're listening to Winning at Life. Yeah, Life Financial News Talk Radio. So how's it going out there? You saving some money? Getting ahead? Well, we can help. It's what we do. We've been doing this for 11 years. Every evening at 7, Saturdays from 10 to 1, Live Financial News Talk Radio. I'm your host, Gregory Ricks, a financial advisor, money manager, founder, and CEO of Gregory Ricks and Associates, the Total Wealth Authority by day, uh, radio host, and uh, your Sherpa by night. If you'd like to join the conversation, we take calls, give you some guidance, got a phone number for you. It's one 877 995 You can reach out to us through the Winning at Life app, text, email, call the show through the app. And, uh, hey, watch us over on Facebook Live. It's at the Winning at Life Facebook page, and you can watch the show as well. Awesome. Good to have you here tonight. So what we got going on, James? Well, if you, if you don't mind letting me start off the show uh, by bringing in the topic from a segment that we had on Saturday's show. Is that all right? Because now you probably know what I'm going to do. Dwayne Stein, it was during his hour, and Chuck and Mandeville had called in. And, you know, the discussion on whether or not it's a buyer's market or a seller's market, it's a common discussion we have with Dwayne, common discussion we have on this show when Dwayne's not here. You know, that's the biggest financial decision a lot of people make is, you know, the the transactions between buying and selling homes. You know, a lot of money hangs in the balance. A lot of your financial future hangs in the balance. But it's just interesting when we have both you and Dwayne here at the same time. And then Chuck and Mandeville's call is just a little bit different. Is it time to buy an investment property. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, so we're going to go back in time here. Uh, you, you, you're still on your way home from work, but we're going to hit the time machine all the way back to Saturday's show. Chuck in Mandeville. You're on Winning It Life with Gregory Ricks. How can we help you, Chuck? Uh, I'd like to uh, ask a question of Mr. Gumbo. Um, if um, From what you're saying on the radio, this doesn't seem to be an opportune time to make an investment in real estate. I mean, I'm talking about like a sing, single family home or a condo or a garden home or something like that. Not to live in, but just as an investment to, you know, capital appreciation or whatever in five years, say, or something like that. Because rates are going up, so you're saying now's not the time, correct? Well, let me ask you this, Chuck. It depends. If you're if you're buying something to hold on to for down the road, um, I, I wouldn't say that would be a good investment, period, unless it's something that you're, it's going to be your retirement home or something. Uh, it, look, I mean, <laughs> rate, rates are still fantastic. If you're looking for something to make a little bit of money that you're looking to, hey, I'm going to now become the next mogul of Mandeville, right, Mr. Chuck? Then if that's the case, <laughs> then the single family home, the condo the garden home unless you already have this in your portfolio doubles fourplexes are always going to be a better opportunity just simply because it gives you some headway these tv shows make investing chuck look like it's the easiest thing on earth and as a guy who lost his shorts which i'm proud to say i'm down 10 pounds so i'm in a smaller size short but with that being said I lost my shorts because I thought, Chuck, I'll buy it. I'll I'll build a house. I'll flip it. I'll do this and that. It doesn't always work. So it's still a fantastic time. And as I alluded to uh, on my show earlier, they've lightened. In March, they they tightened up the the investment property rules. They've lightened those up now. They were only taking in 7%, which meant you had to put down more money. This week, they came out and said, hey, the Fed's going to continue buying those. So it kind of alleviates to what Gregory was saying earlier, you know, the tapering. Maybe that's a sign it's probably not going away either. But so, Chuck, I wouldn't say it's not a good time. Just and you know your finances more than any. I know we've talked about it on the show with Gregory before with with callers. You just got to be careful because chances are, my man, you're not going to that that one home isn't going to get you where you want to be especially in just a five-year time. Another question okay, so for you, Chuck. Just, Go ahead. Just real quick. I mean, just real quick, please, is if one would have the cash to buy a reasonably priced home, 
whatever they go for. You know, not a mansion, just, a, I mean, so you wouldn't have to have a mortgage. Would it be better to wait till, like Gregory says, rates go up uh, during next summer, maybe, and, and house prices fall? Would that be a better uh, strategy? I mean, I mean that's we all. don't know if, and that's the question right. I was going to ask you. Are you thinking about leveraging, which, which is another term for borrowing money to buy the property or cash? If you're in a cash no, position, no, you're not cash. going to have pressure on you. And you're in a much better position. And once again, like like stock investing, you have to have a time horizon of a number of years. So you're probably, you know, what you're always looking for on real estate investing is looking for discounts or problem properties to buy at a lower price. Well, that's in short supply right now, and you're not the only one looking for those. So if you're buy, if you're probably okay. paying, paying more than you want to, if you have a time horizon out of five years, seven years, 10 years, you know you're going to come out fine if you're buying this for the long term. Because look at what property values have done over the past 10. Yep. Don't think about the last year. Think about the past 10 years, the past 20 years. And this is an income machine. Now, the other part of what Dwayne was talking about for everybody listening, why was, was he talking about doubles and four pluses, plexes? It's diversification. You got you have one rental property and somebody stops paying rent. You got to go through a legal process to get them out. That takes time. And now you're short money. So if you're dependent upon one, that's carrying a lot of risk. And real estate investing is risky. Ask Dwayne about that. He lost his shorts. And even if it's yep. flipping properties or re remodeling and selling all that stuff or rental, it's just, that's what I've always talked about for the 11 years I've done this show. You go into real estate, I'm going to give me one, two properties. Well, you don't have a business. If you're going yep. into this, you should be thinking about getting multiple properties at a minimum. And then you have a safety okay. net and you got you have to get out this debt. You know, a lot of them talk about, hey, borrow money and then borrow from this one to buy the next. And at some point, you've got to get this debt out the way. And then you have a manageable business as well. Because then if tough times okay. come around again, and they probably are, just like hurricanes, yep. it'll be back around. And I wouldn't buy all my properties in a hurricane area either, by the way, or flood prone. Right. But see, diversification you. gives you opportunity. Thanks for the call, Chuck. All right. So we're back live now. That was Chuck from Saturday's show. Well, what's interesting is real, real estate investors, that's what Chuck sounds like, a real estate investor, were involved in 17% of the home purchases. That means if there was six houses sold, one of them went to an investor during the second quarter of this year. Investors have taken advantage of the low interest rates to finance upgrades on their purchases and then realize the profit by reselling to a pandemic-weary buyer who's looking for specific features. So interesting market connection. Well, I was interested in Chuck's just assumption like this is the way of the world that when the rates start to go back up it's going to have so much downward pressure on houses that the prices would go down and i don't think he can count on that downward pressure is not the same as making the price go down yeah look I'll, and all markets haven't had the rocket up there you know uh and we are going to see some pressures on that. When when the Supreme Court ruled on uh, August 26th of this year that the CDC had no legal authority to issue eviction more to issue an eviction moratorium, just six percent of the 43.6 million U.S. renters were behind on their rent. We're, you know, and, and as far as the housings, the foreclosure, that's going to pick up. But, you know, if we think we're going to have some cataclysmic event on that light that caused the Great Recession, I don't think we're going to get there on that. So you could stop, see the rise stop on inflate, you know, from an inflation standpoint or people bidding up houses, but, you know, getting discounts and, you know, that's what, you know, that's what everybody's on the hunt for and that's typically what you're looking for 
is to uh, kind of buy the worst house in the neighborhood and fix it up and, and try to get that price. I, I had a discussion recently with a lady that said, yeah, it's kind of a bummer in this, you know, since the storm and they're having to hunt for a house because an investor bought the duplex that they were living in. And then she gets a notice that, uh, she's got to move out, got 30 days to move out. And she thought she was going to be there a couple more years. And it turns out, you know, that neighborhood's getting more prices. The investor bought the place not long ago, says, hey, we're going to remodel. And, yeah, you know, what they're wanting, I, I, I said, did you have a lease or month the month? She said, I've, I've month the month. And I said, well, see, that's one of the problems. Double-edged sword on lease, you probably say, well, you know, I'm not committed very long. Well, neither is the landlord either to you in that case. And I, I think maybe, you know, you, you should look at where you reside a year at a time. And what I shared with her, I said, I, I've experienced this in the past, but kind of my thing, I like being under a lease, and I, I want to have a continuation of that. If I'm coming up, I want to talk about an extension. And another thing I like in leases, if you sell that property, you cannot cancel my lease. Or then I'm not doing a deal under those circumstances. So then you wouldn't have that problem. At least you would have a longer window if you were under a year, two, or three, whatever the period of that lease is. And this goes where investors are looking for properties. Sometimes they're just buying good properties and improving upon it as well. And, you know, heck, New Orleans area is probably in, in this region is what I'll put it more as. It's kind of tough right now because of Hurricane Ida. Like, okay, I think a lot of people are looking for places. I know... I, I know a dozen people right now that need a home. Why? Because theirs is messed up. Kind of too much water in it. All right, if you have a financial situation, not quite sure what to do, maybe you should call Gregory, 504-260, I'm sorry, 877-585-0995. That's 877-585-0995. I'm James Parker. We are Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. Ask Gregory is a financial podcast from the guys who bring you Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. Could this be your Social Security, your 401k, pension, lump sum, your debt, student debt, credit cards? You all are so good. I've listened to you for years. Sometimes I'll pull up to the side of the road and just listen. Find the Ask Gregory podcast on the Winning at Life app, the iHeartRadio app, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Investment advisory services offered through AE Wealth Management, LLC. What's cooking, Gumbo Nation? Cash is king. You hear this almost weekly on Mortgage Gumbo. In 30 years of mortgage advising, it's never been easier to purchase or refinance. And with rates now hanging back near all-time lows, don't miss an opportunity to get those home projects done with a low-rate refinance or purchase that first or new home with zero to low down payment option. Visit snapsendandsave.com. It's that easy. If you like money, you'll love the Winning at Life app. On the Winning at Life app, you can hear the Ask Gregory podcast, where you'll find episodes based on a financial topic. So if you're looking for help on a specific situation, there's a good chance you'll find it on the Ask Gregory podcast, including episodes on 401ks, taxes, stocks, social security, gold, and whether or not you should buy an RV. Hear the Ask Gregory podcast on the Winning at Life app, your wallet's favorite app. Half of estate planning is having a plan put together for your loved ones when you pass away. The other half of estate planning is dealing with someone else's plan when they pass away. Sometimes they have a great plan, but sometimes you need a little help. Don't leave your loved ones in a bind. Call me and we'll make sure you have a plan. Hi, I'm Wes Blanchard, an estate planning attorney in Metairie. What's your plan? Find me at wjblanchardlaw.com. The Ricks Report with Gregory Ricks. What we found through 
history, looking at the past 90 years, most fund managers don't outperform or perform as well as the indexes. Using indexing, historicals teach a skew a higher return. And yes, there's bad stocks in the S&P 500 as it looks right now. And yet the index is up. I like to use index ETFs because those are much lower expense ratios. We try our best in managing our portfolios to avoid trading costs. And we know I've been doing this for 30 years. I've studied trading strategies. You're not going to outsmart the index. You may get lucky. You may get unlucky. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. Find us on the Winning at Life app or winningatlife.com. Investment advisor services offered through AE Wealth Management LLC. Investing involves risk including the potential loss of principal. We ain't playing nothing slow at the parking lot party. The tailgate was just a sip of no sun. Hey y'all. Winning at life. Life Financial News Talk Radio. You know, I've been sharing uh, these uh, wine and wisdom pop-up events that I'm going to have going on that we're doing for our clients and uh there's you know the purpose of that is to uh give them a chance to upgrade their portfolios and we're in in these pop-up events which are supposed to be loose informational and we're and the core things we're going to be discussing so uh from a client that's listening to the show hey we're going to be sending out an email beginning of the week. I, I have this wine and wisdom pop up event at the event center next to the our Mattery office, and we're going to be uh, doing one at one thirty and one at five thirty. And I, I'll just say the event we're expecting to be less than an hour. But the three things we're going to be talking about is the upgraded guided planning system portal that where you can access information about your accounts and uh, performance strategies, metrics. There's, there's some really cool upgrades coming to that from an information standpoint. Your planning information, it just I, I'm really excited about that. The second is the Tax-free models on, on managed money, investment accounts. This is, you know, really more focused for after-tax assets or what we refer to as non-qualified. So we're adding some tax-free income models to that as well. So I'm, I'm really excited about those upgrades and choices for our clients. And third is the fourth asset class that we basically... It's part of the overall philosophy for the past decade, but we've actually now defined it in treating it as an asset class. And it's when, you know, money needs to move because momentum is changing. The money's going to move that's tied to the tactical asset class. But it also has a black swan event feature, which means, yeah, if the market's getting really ugly, that money that's in that asset class is going to shift and reduce exposure to downside. And, you know, overall, I think you should have tactical. I think you should have index linked. I do like bond ETFs and, uh, and, and along with those in, in that arena is where that tax free income is going to be generated too. And of course, I like stock ETFs, four asset classes there. And it's a matter of getting the right blend for you so you have cons- you increase the consist have a chance to increase the consistency on growth and you fare better on the distribution phase. You see that's kind of why I, I mentioned to you I'm Sherpa by night. I'm helping you up that mountain saving money and I'm going to help you on the distribution phase. That's what we do in our day job. We also do that on the show, but I just wanted to share with you these events that we're doing for clients. If you want more information, we'll give you my office number, whether you're in Gulfport, I have an office over in Gulfport. I have one in Baton Rouge, one in Mandeville, Louisiana and Metairie, Louisiana. But if you're living further out somewhere else in the country, 
Well, you can do half a 15 minute phone call. We can do a video meeting, or you can come into one of the offices. One number to call 504. We'll start again, give you a chance. 504 832 9200. And the uh, website is gregoryricks.com. If you're not getting treatment like that and information and ongoing strategy sessions and strategy events to learn more, then, yeah, you need to give my office a call. You can call now, 504-832-9200 or go to gregoryricks.com. Well, you mentioned the, the fourth asset class. I think it might be good context to review. What are the original three asset classes in the uh, invest 50 50 strategy well we separated out the tactical part so we could allocate specific assets to that it's been part of the philosophy but we kind of defi- had to find it as stock etfs bond etfs and index linked investing the index linked investing we're using fixed indexed annuities to get growth based on par rate without downside exposure we like bonds. They've like rarely had a negative year, uh, you know, when you look at overall bonds. And, and then of stocks, yeah, they're volatile. That's why it's rare that a person should do 100% money in stocks. And, and look, if you're wanting to do 100, you say, look, I only want stock investment. I'm fine with the rest. Well, I'm fine. With that too, but here's how I think you should do it. If you're kind of saying, "Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I I have a higher, you know, risk tolerance." Okay, we can attach it all to stocks. But here's what we're going to do: of your money, we'll put fifty percent to stock ETF, so you get the upside of the market. But I'm going to put the other half in tactical growth. So you have some offset when some things get crazy and get some momentum. I tell you what, that's that's a really pretty cool strategy. I think that increases your upside potential overall. I think that to me, I believe, I believe is a better route than going stocks only. All right. So that help you out. Yeah, well, do we have a date set for one of these yet? Yes, Thursday. Thursday, this coming Thursday, like Thursday, a, a week from today. Thursday, okay. yeah, that is a week from today because today is Thursday, so it's this coming Thursday, not today. That would put it on the thirtieth, to be exact. One thirty and five thirty will be the times. We do have a limit on attendees for clients. But if you're a non-client and want to learn more about how we do this, what all this means, yeah, call us. All right, 504-832-9200 is the office number for Gregory, 504-832-9200. The Wednesday Q&A went up yesterday. If you're on the newsletter, the email newsletter list, you already got that sent to you. If you go to gregoryricks.com and you look under the news blog tab, you'll see it's a top story right now. And the, the question that was that Gregory was addressing is how can I perform better than the average investor? And the first thing you'll notice when we do this segment is we spell out what the average investor does. And it's not that hard to beat the average investor. They don't, they don't do all the stories that you hear from your brother-in-law at Thanksgiving or with that coworker you have that tells you about all the winning investments he has and conveniently leaves out all the stocks he dropped that lost the money. No, performing better than the average investor it's not, it's not that long of a segment either, so go check it out, GregoryRicks.com. It's under the News Blog tab, and it's also sitting on our uh, YouTube channel for Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. All that out the way. Another thing I had of, about something you're going to talk about at the pop-up events, you said the upgraded GPS portal. Explain the original GPS portal, the current or the former GPS portal. Well, what that does is give you access to account information. You know, the areas that you're working with us on the other side of the portal also gives you access to whatever you want to build. If you have other accounts, banking, credit card, whatever you're wanting to see. So you could see this 
and keep up to date what's going on, even if it's other investment accounts, those can be attached. And it gives you performance information, insights, and uh, has a digital vault. We're basically upgrading. You're having those things and more metrics. Your, your overall plan you can see in there. And uh, we're really excited ab about all the tools. And, and that's what we're going to talk at the event about next week also. And it's, it's just good that we can give you more information and we've got more capacity there. And it's just going to be different things that you can look at regarding your accounts and planning. We're really excited. And this feels like stuff that we should have been doing about a year ago, but you know, all the events got shut down a little over a year ago. It feels so good to get back to actually doing these public events. Yeah, I, I agree. I like doing these events. Um, I don't necessarily know that this information would have been available there, but we'd been doing events to talk about something else. We, we're always uh, brewing up some ideas and some strategies and about how to move forward. And I, I, I like getting in front of some people and sharing ideas just like we do here on the radio. But that's kind of, we are look and you know, you, you hear me talk on the radio conceptually all that. And, and these are concepts we give to clients and all, all the time and much more than probably what you hear on the show. But w we do a pretty good bit of stuff for them as well. That's very unique. And, um, uh, it's important that they're taken care of because that's what they're there for. Yeah, and I like the idea of uh, the, the updates and trying to do it in a, in a more social so it's not so rigorous and academic setting because when you look at the, the YouTube channel for our radio show, some of the videos that do really good are the update ones. Like the, the best one we've done in the last quarter is what, what are the new rules for inherited IRAs? And when the rules change on these financial products that are going to affect you, where else do you learn about them? Who's even trying to present to you this information, much less give it to you in uh, a relaxed sort of social entertaining setting? That's that's a, a good niche we've got there, and I feel like we're helping a lot of people with that. All right. If you got a financial situation, not quite sure what to do, you can call Gregory, 877-585-0995, or you can give us a text from the front screen of the Winning at Life app. I'm James Parker. We are Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. You all are so good. I've listened to you for years. Ask Gregory is a financial podcast from the guys who bring you Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. I am near retirement, and I wish I would have been listening to y'all for the last couple of years. Learn the ins, outs, do's, don'ts, rules, and tools of the financial world. I have a broker. He has no idea what you and I just talked about. From your 401k to your IRA to your pension to your Social Security to your Medicare. Hi, Greg. Appreciate your service to the community. From your ETFs to your precious metals. Your program helps to ground me. There's some personal, real life there. Find the Ask Gregory podcast on the Winning It Life app, the iHeartRadio app, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And wherever else you can find podcasts, probably. That's exactly what I needed to know. Hey, I love your show. Investment advisory services offered through AE Wealth Management, LLC. The firm is not affiliated with the U.S. government or any governmental agency. Two questions. Do you have a pulse? Do you own anything? If you said yes to both, you probably need a will. You may even need a trust. We all know a lawyer. Do you know someone who specializes in estate planning? Do you really trust the husband of your sister's friend from college? Or would you feel better putting your family in the hands of the estate planning attorney of the Total Wealth Authority? I'm Wes Blanchard. What's your plan? Offices in Metairie and at wjblanchardlaw.com. Most people think of Crime Stoppers as only a tip reporting line, but we're so much more. Crime Stoppers GNO has worked in our area schools, offering prevention presentations on trending topics from drugs, bullying, online safety, suicide prevention, and much more. And we have a high school teen leadership program which provides students with a first hand look at the criminal justice profession as a future career while learning to be an advocate for their fellow students. So to learn more, visit safeschoolsla.com or call 504 837 8477. 
If you like money, you'll love the Winning at Life app. On the Winning at Life app, you can listen to the show live six days a week. And if we're not on at the moment, you can hear a replay of the latest episode of Winning at Life. Whether you're getting a late start on your retirement savings or keeping up with the financial news, Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks is there on demand. Hear the Winning at Life show on the Winning at Life app, your wallet's favorite app. News. I'm Steve Rappaport. A CDC advisory panel in a series of votes recommends a coronavirus vaccine booster shot for millions of people. The first to recommend the Pfizer booster for age 65 and up was a unanimous yes. The second for ages 50 to 64 with underlying conditions was approved by a 13 to 2 vote. The closest was the third option, approved 9 to 6, to allow booster shots on the basis of individual benefit and risk for ages 18 to 64. Fox's Grinnell Scott recipients can get the booster six months after their second dose of Pfizer's vaccine. A federal grand jury indicting Brian Laundry for unauthorized use of a debit card. Laundry is wanted for questioning in the death of his girlfriend, Gabby Petito. Her remains were found in a national park in Wyoming last weekend. Laundry disappeared after he refused to speak with police. America is listening to Fox News. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks is a copyright of Down South Strategies for the private use of our audience. Any unauthorized use of this broadcast without express consent is prohibited. For podcasts, show information, and contacts to our sponsors, go to winningatlife.com or download the Winning at Life app. If you've got a financial situation and you're not quite sure what to do, you better call Gregory. Or Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. It's a little too loud. Hey there, how you doing? It's Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks, The Money Show. I'm your co-host, James Parker. If you've got a financial situation or what to do, you're sitting there with your phone waiting for me to say the number. Here it goes, 877-585-0995. 877-585-0995. Dwayne and Slidell, you're on Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. How can we help you, Dwayne? That's pretty funny. Hey, thanks, guys. Well, Gregory always talks about don't leave your money where it was, and so... This ancient history. I was a private employee for Avenue Shipyards, private company before. Then it went to an employee-owned company. And then I left the company um, after I had went employee-owned in Northrop Grumman swooped in and bought out all the shares and everything else. You know, long story short, there's a substantial amount of money, 100 k in an account. That's a separate account that I check it. You don't add to it. You don't do anything to it. They say I can't touch it until I'm a certain age. And by the end, I'm a federal employee, and I want to take that – how can I take that money and put it into my thrift savings plan? And what Gregor was talking about earlier with, you know, with that 2030 plans, life cycle plans, you know, to not leave it so volatile. I want, them, I don't want the money in two places. I want to take it and join it and don't know. Yeah, it's that ESOP money. And it, yes, there's people was, I've sat down with, Dwayne, um, that have spent careers for – Started out with Avondale and with the acquisitions, yeah. the the ESOP at one point it was an employee owned. And when we yeah. sit down with them and, and then the pensions, there's kind of like five different things going on or six. And some of it you can get money up front and the balance of the pension. Oh, it, it's it's crazy. And it and actually the People like you and others that have worked for that company and and look at that really need somebody versed. I, and I'll tell you, we've dealt with it a lot. But that's well, one of that's the things the about the ESOP. Let me finish, Dwayne. I'll, I'll get back yeah, to you. Is they they have rules that you can't touch that money, even though you may not be working there. Where like a four hundred one k, you can move, but that ESOP has a age rule in it that you can't do anything with it until you reach that age threshold. Now, go ahead, Dwayne. That's exactly right, Greg, what you just said right there. If there's, you know, if there's $100,000 sitting there, and I want to take it, and I want to join it to my, my thrift savings plan, and then, but it's like, I don't want for them, I haven't worked for them in, in 30 plus years, but all that money is still there, still mine, I can check on statements, and it does grow, but the age requirement and moving the money, you know, is it? possible to like listen i want to take this money and i want to put something more safe which is a thrift savings plan and 
go from there. Um, uh, when, uh, it sounds like you got a lot of experience with it. I don't know how to handle that situation. Yeah, you know? there's nothing you can do with that money until you reach there? that age. Three. Yes, sir. It's going to wow. just sit there. I with <laughs> acquisitions and such. Who would? And it would take somebody from a corporate standpoint to request and make some rule changes, but nobody's going to go back and do that. This is just going to wow. play out when the rest of you finally shift that money out. And then at some point there might be a threshold where they close it and let everybody opt out. But there's been no changes. And, and we've been working with this for a couple decades now. Because, yeah, the yard closed down, and, you know, my money is just there. I can't see if that I can't move it. I can't add to it. It does increase, and it does grow, and there is an age requirement. I think it's like 65 and a half. I, I reach Social Security retirement age, but then I guess at that point in time, I could take it, and I could move it to my first savings plan. Is there a tax implication with that when I take one, like, big thing like that and move it? it it's qualified money, and it's going to roll over to that okay. and then you could add it to another plan or qualified money well you know what i guess gregory and, and you know and, and james is it, it's there until i get to the age or you know, my my surviving spouse or you know my heirs that that money's there it's not going away yeah and and the irs kind of defines it as under 401a qualified defined contribution plan is a stock bonus plan or stock bonus money purchase plan. So it is qualified account, so it can roll over and hold that tax deferred status once you move the money. If you take it directly, it's they're going to do some withholding and it'd be a taxable okay. event. That sounds incredibly frustrating. Oh, it is. Well, well, everybody, it is. everybody, every time I talk to somebody, it's like, Dwayne, they're frustrated. That's the best information I've ever had. I mean, really, that's the best information I've ever heard on this. You're welcome. Well, <laughs> I'm glad we could be here for you today. Thank you very much, Dwayne. Right. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you. Jim in New Orleans, you're on Winning It Life with Gregory Ricks. What can we do for you, Jim? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, I'm 69. Uh, I've been getting my Social Security for uh, since I was 66. I get, I think, the maximum 2,500 and some odd dollars a month. And uh, I still, I'm still working. I'm gonna be working for the next 10 years. I know that doesn't sound right, but and I make close to 100 thousand dollars a year. And I was just wondering, do do they ever quit taking Social Security out of my check? They do not. They do not. Yeah, you, so if I'm you 90 like years old, I'm so. still working. They're still going to take Social Security. Yeah, I know. Uh, that kind of sounds contrary, doesn't it? So while I waited to FRA, I've got my 35 years. When you think about that, they can do these other things like figure out who gets child credits and not what. Well, hey, I've got 35 best years. I can't better it. And uh, I waited to FRA to start. Why do I have to keep paying? there so yeah it, it's a good question so, and they're going to keep taking it out yeah yeah so you know it sounds like yeah oh hell you're getting thirty thousand dollars a year from social security but <laughs> hell they're still <laughs> i get it jim now let me see Plus when you started employer. when you started working 35 years ago considering inflation adjusted were you making a hundred thousand a year then well, no, I wasn't making it then, but I mean, I was making, I've always made fairly good money. Right. Know? Well, all I'm saying, the reason I asked that, it's a loaded question, because I, I knew probably what you were going to answer is, you're probably improving your years because of that, so you're probably increasing some Social Security benefit as you go, because you're improving your 35 years by the income that you're but, working but from what I can understand, the maximum you're going to get, I don't care if you made a million dollars a year for 100 years, you're only going to get 2500 and some odd dollars a month. Is that correct? Nope. That changes each year what the maximum benefit is. Really? Yes. Huh. I didn't know that. Yep. So. Uh, they, they make adjustments on that. Yeah. Okay, well. Well, and let me help you with that here. I, I've, I've got a number for you. According to Social Security, let's pull this up here. You know, for somebody filing at FRA in 2021, the actual maximum they can receive is $3,113. For somebody waiting the 70 is 
$3,895 a month, and somebody filing at 62 is $2,324, $2,324 yeah. a month. So that is adjusted. They're not going to just come in and say, dude, you were capped. I know you keep making all this money. We're not giving you more. No, you're getting upside to that. Those maximums do get adjusted upward. And if you're improving your benefit, even though you're still working, I know it feels painful, but you're likely to be improving your benefit as you go. You're not capped out. All right. In the middle of his call, Jim in New Orleans is kind of upset that he's going to be working well into his 70s and they're still going to be taking out the full Social Security taxes from him. Remember that lady we talked about earlier this week that is, what was she, 101 and still working, and they're still taking taxes out of her check? Yeah, I'm sure she's got a little worse than you, Jim. But Well, you know, taxes, payroll taxes is the number one source of revenue for Social Security, the payroll taxes, not the money they've collected all over the years and up and, and not the tax on Social Security, but it's payroll taxes. So, yeah, if you're working, they're not giving you any exemption. And those that it caps out for for higher income, they're going to probably keep bumping that up as well. Yeah. So, they, Social Security needs that money. And then the previous caller before him, Dwayne and Slidell, dealing with uh, the ESOP, the Employer Stock Option Plan Program. Which one is that? Either wh wh Whichever one it is. He doesn't like the fact that you can't mess with it, touch it at all, do anything with it until you get to their little age threshold. Yes. Yeah, so I see that from time to time where somebody has a plan and doesn't let them have access to their money. And, and even 401ks all don't have the same rules. And it could be like, yeah, if you take something, you got to take it all. Or you can take a distribution and, and some will let you, yeah, you can take some money out every month. But if you change it, you have to take it off. So there's different rules out there for those plans, how they distribute. And some plans just, uh, yeah, when you leave the firm, you need to take your money with you. All right. If you have a financial situation, not quite sure what to do, you can do it. You just heard other people do. Call Gregory, 877-585-0995. That's 877-585-0995. I'm James Parker, and we are Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. If you've got a financial situation and you're not quite sure what to do, you better call Gregory. We help you with your money. We're money managers, income planners, investments, Medicare, estate planning, and then creating tax efficiency. Gregory Ricks and Associates, 504-832-9200 or gregoryricks.com. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Investment advisory services offered through AE Wealth Management, LLC. When I was growing up, my mom relied on old wives' tales to get rid of outdoor bugs. One method included putting two pennies in a bag of water and hanging them throughout the backyard. And let's not forget mom's go-to, the citronella candle, which never worked. It's the 20s. We have science and much more thorough ways to get rid of bugs. Call Mosquito Joe. Mosquito Joe has this time-release capsule that they spray that slowly releases their mosquito death over a course of a month. Because mosquitoes suck. NewOrleans.MosquitoJoe.com if you've got a financial situation and you're not quite sure what to do, you better call Gregory. Regarding life insurance, you have three core types that I, I think of as term life insurance, universal life insurance, and whole life insurance. I can hear them out there, some of the guys in the industry that are listening to my show. Well, well you miss variable life. Yeah, I know. There's some downside risk to that. Are you wanting your life insurance to have some negative stuff going on? I think not. So I'd rather have more of a defined life insurance and how this is going to work going forward. We should have a conversation. We've got kids, all this responsibility. 
Maybe it should be bought. Gregory Ricks and Associates. Find us at GregoryRicks.com or call 504-832-9200. Investment advisory services offered through AE Wealth Management, LLC. The Ricks Report with Gregory Ricks. So part of our Invest 50-50 money management philosophy is to use stock ETFs. We like the indices. We're not going to beat them, so let's join them. Somebody will say, well, what's your track record? Well, what's the track record of the uh, S&P 500? Because that's what we're using, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and some of the sub-indices there. Well, what are you doing on bonds? Well, we like those on the ETFs because I'm not in the buying houses and selling houses business. You know what the pain it is to sell a house? Well, that's kind of like selling a bond. you got to list it and wait for bids. I'd rather do it inside of an ETF that has low expense ratio and let the institutional guys help with that selection. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. Find us on the Winning at Life app or winningatlife.com. Investment advisory services offered through AE Wealth Management, LLC. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Yeah, the boys Hey, how you doing? It's Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. Welcome to The Money Show. I'm your co-host, James Parker. If you've got a financial situation, not quite sure what to do, maybe it's time you called Gregory, 877-585-0995, 877-585-0995. You can give us a text from the front screen of the Winning at Life app. You can do the rare uh, reach out where you use the email, info at gregoryricks.com, info at gregoryricks.com. And if you're watching on any of our live streams here, we're on a few different video platforms, just leave a comment in the comment section. It'll pop up on our screen. We can answer your question that way as well. Hey, yeah, they're raising taxes. How about go to uh, gregoryricks.com slash strategies if you are looking some ways, idea to create efficiency. And and I'll give you another. If you're not at your old job anymore, could be because you're retired or out of work, or you've got a new, better job, but that money's still at the old job. Five things to do with your old 401k. Guess where to go? You're right. GregoryRicks.com slash 401k and get some ideas there. Don't don't let that money sit over there collecting dust or not being watched out for. There's some things you can do with that to perhaps, perhaps, just perhaps, increase the probability of growth. If it was my money, I wouldn't leave it at the old job. No, not at all. Hey, but... You know, you hear me talk about this time to time. You can't even begin to plan for retirement without this number. One of the hardest truths of retirement planning is that you're never going to get it right. You know, it it is kind of a moving target. I was having a discussion with the family a while back. And one of the questions came up was the beneficiary designations based on the value of the assets. And their concerns were not wanting somebody to get shorted and the impact of distributions on that. And and it, we just kind of kept, it seemed like going over and over again on it. And I said, you're not going to figure this out today in a way that you never have to revisit this discussion again. And I said, we can make adjustments anytime regarding the bennies or the percentage they're getting or how it's split. And I I just simply asked this question. A decade ago, 
How much did you have in assets, I asked. I said, it's okay, you don't have to answer, but it's a good bit less than you have today, right? Yeah, I said, the probability is you're going to have more in the future as well than what you have now. So trying to get that right, it, it's not that something's wrong, it's just this is something that's moving, and it's not just... You know, if you're kind of good with a percentage overall, but there were some complications there that you couldn't just, well, give all five of the kids 20% each. It wasn't that way, but it was, you know, wanting to create fairness on something that values are going to move. So that's like, uh, as I mentioned, that, you know, this is kind of a tough thing to get right. And what we hope to get right is to never run out of money. So just like today's retirees could never have foreseen the pandemic and the recession, the great recession. And the thing is, problems are coming in the future. We just don't know what they are. And I'll, I'll tell you one of them we kind of know, and it's kind of targeted for 2023. It's called rising interest rates. The Fed's going to raise the rates. That's coming at some point, and the markets aren't going to like it. But one of the keys to successful retirement planning is to is not to get things exactly right, but get close as you can based on some educated guesswork and err on the side of estimating too high rather than too low. I see on the future, I'd rather estimate lower returns. Oh, well, the market the past decades averaged yeah, I just put out a number, and this isn't accurate, but, oh, it's average 10%, so you kind of count on that going forward. That You never should use that. I think, you know, what's a reasonable ex expectation on returns? I think it's a, a range of 3 to 6%, depending on portfolio mix, actually. And I think, well, what if I, I mostly grow stocks? I said, okay. Then I think you're better off projecting around six. Even though market historicals are more, you know, the market has down years. And when you're looking at actual, because the market is, you know, think about it. The returns are not always up. But if you're going in average and say, well, I'm, I'm going to put my calculator, I'm going to expect a 9% return. Well, you're calculating in a 9% gain every year. And the market doesn't work that way. It has down years and up years. So when you're considering that average with the up and down, you're really getting somewhere about 6% is the correct number to kind of be expecting on an upside. So in order to estimate how long your retirement will last and uh, how many years of living expenses you'll have to cover. You need to, the thing you need to know is when do you plan to retire? And that brings us to how long do you expect to live? And you can choose any retirement date you'd like to start with. So that's the first, when are you retiring? So what age are you going to become that year, you see what I said there, what age are you going to become that year? Because you, your birthday may not be there yet, but it's important to make judgments in retirement by the year, the age you're going to be in that retirement year. But after you crunch some numbers, you realize the plan isn't feasible. You may have to push back retirement so that you have more to save. As far as life expectancy, you know, you really don't know that number. And it's something I talk about more now because that is something we're trying to estimate what is life expectancy. In most cases, I'm factoring in a longer time. You, you can use your family history. You can use your own lifestyle as a starting point. You could also try a life expectancy calculator like the one from Social Security or the IRS. And it doesn't hurt to add a little cushion to your estimate, especially if you're a healthy person and assume you're going to live in to your 90s at least. It may not happen, but I'd rather have extra money and pass it along and leave behind. I know some of you like, you know, I, I don't want to leave any behind. Well, it's going to be hard to get to zero 
at the right time. So you need to count on, you're going to leave some money behind because the bigger problem is if you get that wrong and you've run out. So you'll, you'll leave some money to your heirs and I'd rather do that than outlive my own estimate. So once you have these two pieces of information, calculating retirement length is as simple as subtracting your chosen age. So if you're retiring at 60 and you think you're going to live tonight, well, that's 30 years you need to be funded. So you got to factor in inflation, returns, and how's that going to look from distributions. And I'm going to tell you, you probably should inflate it some, Give yourself some raises on distributions, and you don't need to. And you don't need to treat the income as well. I I, I want to be close to zero. I maybe want to have a year's income left at age ninety. Here here's the thing, I think you need to plan it so you're leaving. And I, I would define it this way: a few hundred thousand dollars extra on the back end. Why? And some of you probably drove off the road. Well, I don't even have that much now. Well, relate it to your situation, but you need cushion on the back end. Why? You want to go out in the lifestyle that you're accustomed to. You're probably going to need some help. Medical costs are going to probably be more. And there's things you're going to need, so make sure you have money for that. As a couple, and you're second to die, you need some left, but there's probably going to cost you some on taking care of that spouse that goes before you as well. So that's something to factor in. So I just don't know how you get to zero. Those that get to zero, meaning they di died bro, yeah, they had a problem because they ran out of money early. Don't let that happen to you. All right, if you have a financial situation looking for the services of a financial advisory firm, start your search with Gregory Ricks and Associates. You just heard the guy across the table from me here. Check him out at his day job, 504-832-9200 or go to gregoryricks.com. I'm James Parker. We are Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. Investment advisory services offered through AE Wealth Management, LLC. Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks is for informational purposes only and does not recommend the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, legal advice, or tax advice. Investing involves risk, including potential loss of principal. Raw conversion is a taxable event and may have several tax-related consequences. Be sure to consult with a qualified tax advisor before making any decisions regarding your IRA. The information and opinions contained herein are provided by third parties and have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Neither AE Wealth Management nor advisors providing investment advisory services through AE Wealth Management recommend or facilitate the buying or selling of cryptocurrency. The firm is not affiliated with the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The firm offers insurance services. We are Winning at Life with Gregory Ricks. WRNO FM, New Orleans, an iHeart Radio station. Available everywhere on our free iHeart Radio app. Number one for music, radio, and podcasts, all in one.